anyone uh, can work on their psychic abilities. Um, my specialty now is the forensic astrology. This was the perfect way to validate our psychic information. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for another edition of Forensic Astrologer. I'm Valerie Evans. Today, psychic investigator and forensic astrologer John Baisley joins us to talk about what led him to forensic astrology and why he uses it in his psychic investigations. We'll also show you how the crime chart analysis in which John successfully worked with the family of the victim, which led to an arrest. We start out with John telling me how he knew he had a psychic ability. It was in 2006 when I had a visitation from my grandmother that had passed away long ago and she was standing at the foot of my bed and we had a short conversation and I woke up and I said, gee, it was nice to see my grandmother again. And I called my mother and uh, there was a long pause and she said john today is the anniversary of your grandmother's death and i had not known that date so that was pretty significant to me but again i just put it as a coincidence put it aside and then i was watching a show called medium and it was about a psychic medium allison dubois i looked her up and she had almost the exact same conversation with her grandfather in her bedroom. And she said, that's how I found out I was a psychic medium. And I said to myself, well, if that's how she found out she's a psychic medium, am I a medium? And that really got the ball rolling. And I started looking things up on the internet. Books came uh, fast and furious and I started doing uh, psychic development circles and so on. The asteroid Pallas indicates your skill in identifying patterns. For John, it's in Aquarius, the sign of astrology. John's natal Saturn is placed in Pisces, represented by Neptune. Neptune represents spirits and movies. Saturn trying Neptune, old movies, or spirits from the past. John's eighth house and Scorpio planets indicate his ability to speak to the dead. His eighth house ruled by Scorpio. I would call it a gift, uh, but I, I do think that anyone uh, can work on their psychic abilities. Tell me about your first psychic investigation. I guess I was looking on uh, Amazon uh, for programs that dealt with psychic phenomena. There was this one show called The Psychic Detective with Tony Stockwell, and I watched it, and again, let me look up this guy, see what he's all about. Found out he was teaching at the Omega Institute here in upstate New York, not a half hour from my house. I signed up right away and he had a two-part class. One was uh, on trans mediumship and the second part was on psychic detection. And I was like, oh, uh, that looks good. So I took the trance uh, week long workshop. That's eight hours a day, sometimes 12. You're working with, of course, other like-minded and like gifted individuals. We worked on actual cases where people in the group uh, had an unsolved case, but that's where it, it really started. And I went into a full mentorship uh, with Tony Stockwell and uh, James Von Prague, Pam Coronado, and so on. In the mentorship with Tony Stockwell, uh, there was uh, six of us that formed a group that would meet on Mondays and we work on cold cases or actual cases that we found out about uh, as some people seek out mediums to find out about a crime or murder or something that's happened within their uh, family. And with that, Tony Stockwell tasked our group with looking at a certain case. It was the Kevin Hicks case um, back in the 1980s in England, and he had uh, vanished. No one saw him again. So we worked on it. Uh, psychically and then 
I was, I guess, typing in Google forensic and just astrology popped up next to it. And lo and behold, your website came up and your book on the website. And that's what really started the ball rolling. And as I glanced at it, I noticed that this was the perfect way to validate our psychic information. And that was the very first case I used uh, the um, forensic astrology. And um, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Tony as part of the mentorship uh, where you sit down with him for 45 minutes and go over whatever you want. And uh, I gave him the findings of the case and then I introduced him to forensic astrology. He had never heard about it before and he was absolutely blown away. And he had me presented to the class, which was nice because now it gives the opportunity to have more forensic astrologers out there. We need more psychic detectives. We need more forensic astrologers because there's thousands upon thousands of cases and they're coming every day. I think that um, everyone is, is different and how they think and their gifts, what they bring to the table. For me, um, my specialty now is the forensic astrology. And I think in coming together and putting all that information uh, is, is wonderful. And not only that, when you have two or three psychic mediums coming up with the same information, that speaks to you. You have to have a methodology and stick to that each and every time. For us psychics, we like to be in the same place because the energy builds in that place. With um, the forensic astrology, I like to first do kind of like Bob Ross. What does he do? He takes his biggest brush and he takes large brush strokes. And I just look at the chart and kind of take it in. But then comes the work, the ascendant, what's the ruling planet, descendant, what's the ruling planet. And then from there, I'm looking at the uh, 12th house, the eighth house, the fourth house, like the two death houses. Um, and I've already got an idea after looking at a photograph of a victim, whether they're alive or passed on. But again, this is validation. And then from there, um, really starts the work. And it all depends on what kind of case it is. If it's a missing person, I'm looking at, at Saturn. Where's the body and the bones, right? And, uh, and if it's just a, uh, it's a murder or something like that, you know, uh, I now, and I hadn't always done this. It's most recent, but I find it very helpful looking at Pluto, uh, right? The point of trouble in the, the case. And sometimes it, it's not readily apparent, but once you start building that story uh, from the planets and the signs and the houses and the degrees, uh, then you can get a pretty good idea. Here's where it, it all began. Here's where it, where it started. And it, it's almost like a mini story all into itself. This case came out of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And how I came to know about it was uh, his niece, Hannah, had reached out to an astrology group that I belonged to. I said, here's what I see. And he was uh, passed on, uh, found in a field, a bloody body wrapped in a blanket. And you could see his co-ruler, the moon, is in the 12th house. So that's validating the chart already. Suspects, what are the usual? Right? So we have Uranus and Taurus, and that could be a loud scream. Uh, that could be a loud weapon. It could be fast food. Um, there's many things. You have Chiron and Aries. Uh, and I explained to Hannah, again, kind of like subtitling it, that that could be anywhere from a headache or an aneurysm slap in the face or a blow or a blunt force trauma to the head or a gunshot. Uh, Neptune in Pisces, uh, alcohol, drugs, mental illness. And what's interesting is, is that it's at 23 degrees, which is the evidence degree. Um, I saw something unique in the chart that I was working on only a few weeks before 
and that was decapitations. And here is Saturn, 22 degrees, kill or be killed. And uh, it's right on the cusp. And there is Mars right next to it. And I said, you know, that to me looks like a decapitation. I don't know. But also you have Uranus in Taurus. And that I've seen in decapitations too, where Uranus, it's right out there where it's, it's stating uh, for Aquarius uh, to interrupt, to cut, to cut across. And what does Taurus govern? The neck and the shoulders. So again, that's kind of a double validation uh, to that. So I've got the, I've got probably a gunshot to the head and a decapitation. I've got drugs involved and so on. And then I'm also called to Venus. And I'm thinking that that's a woman and she's standing right over the body. And I'm also looking, as you mentioned, Lilith is in Gemini and 29 degrees. That's a destructive force. But it's also telling me that there's uh, at least two people involved in this. Uh, and then I have the North Node, uh, Rahu. And uh, to me, when it's next to a planet like that, it's almost whispering to that planet. Sometimes I see that in hangings, you know, uh, Uranus being uh, fast, uh, Taurus being suffocation, and, you know, uh, Rahu is whispering, do it, do it, do it. Pluto, the point of trouble, uh, it's at 28 degrees. And again, it's just, it's making me feel like there's a mother involved. And a lot of this is also coming from my psychic self, you know, what feels good and so on like that. And of course I look to degree theory and you may have words or sentences and I'm picking those out psychically. I have listed all those out for Hannah and uh, I send them over to her and, and she came back and said, you know, you're hundred percent spot on about my uncle. And a lot of this is uh, resonating. And, and I noticed too that uh, North Node is conjunct Algol. There's a lot of things going on with the head here. It's not just, you know, Mars next to Saturn and, and so on, but with, uh, with Aries, you know, yes, I see that as a head, the ram head, but also you see uh, Uranus, uh, which is also our assailant, right? And he's at the highest point in the chart, tremendous power. And at 13 degrees, again, that's speaking, you know, not only head, but a, uh, a gun as well. Are they uh, any closer to finding out who did this? That's interesting that you say that. Uh, just last night, I received information from Hannah that arrests were made and it turns out that it was a mother of 33 years of age and her son, 16 years of age, uh, committed this, this crime. And it is looking like the son is the one that carried out the murder that pulled the trigger. He's the most unassuming person you would ever see, you know, slight in build, young, doesn't look strong at all. What's interesting to me is uh, when I see that, it's almost a straight drop to the south node. I, I always look at that as being a, a downfall of something. And that, that'll be interesting to, to understand more of. I, I would look at Scorpio. So Scorpio might be an answer to or one of the answers, like sometimes it can be mafia. <laughs> I don't think so yeah. in the case, but what do you think? Well, I think that you're absolutely right. I think, um, what does Scorpio govern? It governs the eighth house, right? Sex, money, drugs, insurance, and so on like that. And I think that this was speaking to drugs and money. Um, Michael had a cannabis store 
and he did make lots of money and he's very compassionate individual. I think he liked to help others and that kind of drew him to a bad crowd. And I think that they were looking for money. And I believe that when they finally uh, abducted him, they didn't think that he was going to, to fight back. And that's one of the things I want to make known. Michael died bravely. Uh, he didn't give in to his fate. He had fighting spirit. And I think that that's what led to his death is that these people were surprised and they were like, oh my God, they thought he was going to be some pushover or something. And now they had to fight back. They had a weapon. Of course, Michael can't uh, fight back against that. And uh, that led to his demise. That, that to me is, is an evidence and it's in Scorpio. And that tells me that something is down low and, and wet and so on. I gave that to, to Hannah and, and, you know, that's an avenue for inquiry, uh, possibly for the police, but he did have a safe that was down and low and that was opened and the, the money was, was missing. Thanks for joining me. I'm Valerie Evans. See you next time.